Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We will talk about. Will you, will you tell me your name? I didn't catch it when I was out here before. My name's Dan. They know me as Dan the Waterman, yeah. and uh, we do a show called Flat Earth Hollywood. All right. Hopefully cool. one day to become Flat Earth Night Live. I got a book on that. It should keep it positioned. That'd be cool. So I think we covered all. I mean, the one I saw you the other day. Yeah, we, we talked pretty about much a lot everything. Of stuff. But I yeah, any follow-ups? Uh, I'm glad you glad you showed up. By yeah. the way, there was nothing I could do to. Uh, no, it's okay. So I, I figured it out. Figured out. I yeah. figured. Well, my initial thing was like, why don't you just interview him? You want to, yeah, you yeah, want yeah, to Joe. I, I want to. I want to, oh, and okay. I'm going to, but I didn't want to make that the whole purpose of being here. I well, I'm just saying if you wanted to, people. most people are. Thanks. No, I know it scared me, too. <laughs> I put, most, most people are like, oh, you're going to interview? Yeah, I'll do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I'll definitely follow up and interview him. Right. Um, anyway. How did, uh, how did your speech go? Went well. Uh, it was it was it was the first time I'd done that one particular night. I built that one to kind of carry me through the year, so I could take it with me. In fact, we just built the PowerPoint for it uh, an hour before I went on. Really? Yeah. You know, I mean, I knew I had all the slides, but we put them all together, and and I already had. I mean, the text is what's important. I could have done it without slides, but I. In fact, this was the first one I actually had with slides because most of the time uh, they'll simulcast and put you up on the screen. You know, so people can see all the way in the back. You know, you don't have to distance, but this is small enough they didn't have to worry about that. Um, but it was good. No, I, li I liked it. I liked the um, the notes I, I, I wanted to cover. And uh, again, my point was more of a state of the union, how we got here. Because a lot of people, now that we've gone four years, are you leaving? Come back. Oh, okay. Um, uh, state of the union and how we got here, because even though it's only been four years, there's a lot of people that have only been in like two. That's they forgot the weirdness that it took to get here. All this, this, this strange chain of events. I'm, I mean, seriously, we have a lot of veterans that have forgotten the Leonardo story, mm -hmm. which, you know, him going to the Vatican and, and talking about Flat Earth on camera. It's like, what are you doing? You know, and, and this is 2016, everything was surreal to us. It's like, why would you talk to him about Flat Earth when you literally have 15 minutes with the man? That's all you have. And, and, you, and you won't be invited back anytime soon. And that's what he that's what he brought up. And and he seriously, you, you ought to watch the video. Yeah, I haven't chance. seen that. It's fascinating. Cool. So okay, I guess my question is, because the crowd is pretty small and there is a lot of empty yeah. seats. Yeah. If if flat Earth is so big, if it's grown so much, right. why aren't more people showing up in person? As I mean, a lot of people are going online and watching videos. It mostly but, because of that. Uh, well, okay, there's two reasons. Trouble. One, and I, and I've seen it over and over, and that is. 90% of the, our, our membership are in the closet because they can't be seen. Even even going to this, not not just by, by their friends, but imagine trying to explain to your spouse where you were going to go today. Because it's rare, rare that in a same family you'll have a husband and wife or a boyfriend and girlfriend that are on the same page. So even my, my cousins are a perfect example. They'd love to be here, but they can't because they, they you would have to tell something. Oh yeah, I'm going to blah blah blah. Is that or you're going to lie? Uh, which de never ever happens. Uh, that's why the meetups are so great. I mean, yeah, we've had meetups that are bigger than this. In fact, the Arcadia meetup was, was bigger than this, but it was a nice effort on their part. Plus, there's a couple other aspects of it which blended in. One, it wasn't a solid Flat Earth conference, which was fine, and I knew that. Um, it had more religious overtones. Uh, most of the Flat Earth conferences are, um, I wouldn't just say secular, but they don't put a lot of chapter and verse stuff like this and we we have I mean you gotta remember at least fifty percent of the flyer community are hardcore Christians. So it's well, a, why do you think that is? Because of the default okay, here's why. If you all of a sudden go from this, if you're a Christian and you were believing in this, hi Caroline. Hi <laughs> She totally digs me. The um in his wildest dreams. No, don't hit me. Don't hit me. <laughs> Uh, 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 I totally made you lose your frame of thought. Yeah. Oh, I love doing that. That's so awesome. Uh, uh, well, Caroline's great. She is. She is one of the best flatter cheerleaders ever. Uh, so no, if you go, if you're if you're a Christian, and you believe in that, and all of a sudden you go to this. If you were say, let's just say, ninety percent sure in your biblical truth, your biblical paradigm, you're now ninety five percent sure. At least, or even higher, and for a lot of them, it's that's all it takes. It's like, okay, any that doubts that they had that this place was created, it's gone. I mean, truthfully, come on, this will eventually kill atheism. Uh, for you know, not maybe entirely, because there's always going to be somebody. It's like, but they would not believe this. You can't be an atheist by this and still be an atheist. You know what I mean? Why not? Well, because then you're really, you're splitting hairs. Because the technology required 
the, to, to build something like this is so far advanced that, okay, you're either talking about a massive advanced civilization or you're talking about God, the divine. Well, what's the difference between? Because if a giant golden spaceship lands, who are you going to claim is in the, the giant golden spaceship? The advanced civilization or the divine? Because you're going to have both. I mean, all of a sudden, seriously, if some giant golden thing landed in that parking lot over there, uh, there would you'd have a new religion forming overnight, mm -hmm. just because, as long as they were better looking than us. That's the whole catch. A lot of people don't know that. It's wow. Like, so, no, it's true. Yeah, they have to be. They if they were ugly... If they were ugly, uh, we'd, we'd hate them immediately. They <laughs> have wow. to be... We'd never get used to it. They'd have to be, and they can't be a color that we have here, either. Because then you're then you're Ident running identity politics. Your identity Let's politics. They'd have to. You seriously? I've thought about a lot of this stuff. They'd have to either be blue, avatarish, or silver, or maybe gold. That's it. That's all you got. And so anyway. Was, well, okay. So I'm an atheist, but I could, complete. Complete. Really good for you. But I could imagine coming around to thinking that. The Earth was flat, sure, but that not necessarily changing my beliefs about everything else. Hey, if you can hold on to it, great. Uh, however, again, even you though are then you're going to start blurring the lines, which is okay. If this place, this thing was built by some giant space guy in a bathrobe, not, you know, I'm kind of mixing a few yeah, things. Oh. Then, then, <laughs> then who is it? I mean, whoever they are. Okay, let me throw it well, this well, way. Me... You may not believe in God, right? But whoever built this is one step closer to knowing God's phone number than you are. Well, okay, from my point of view, I'd say it's possible for the Earth to be flat, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's encased with a, a man. A, it's not so, that, a built so system. much that, though. Right. It, it, is, it, is it of um, wild randomness with the timepieces, uh, these acting as timepieces, with these being sized well, that, that That's way. just it. It can't be, unless you're saying, and I know there's like 70% of the people believe in a dome, and another 30% believe that it's an infinite plane. Okay. Though it might be part of a much giant, much larger sphere, but then you're getting the whole space thing again. It's like you don't have to have a giant sphere, but then people have a hard time thinking about infinity. Thing is, if well, it's, infinity is a problem no matter what. You oh yeah, yeah. Think infinity, you've got a tough time with infinity. Right? Nobody has an explanation yeah, that makes infinity make sense. Right. Whether you're talking about the Earth being a globe or flat or an infinite plane. Right. So, to me, when I talk to, are you people, photo bombing me? Are you video bombing me? Yeah, yeah. we're right. video bombing Mark Sergeant. <laughs> Dan the Waterman. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, it, no matter what you believe, you don't have a good answer for, okay, what's beyond that? Right. And what's beyond that, right? right? So if you said, well, I'm an atheist, but I believe in flat earth, but I can't explain what's beyond the atmosphere sure. that encloses us. I don't know what's underneath the earth. I don't really know how to explain the, the sun and the moon right. and, and exactly what they are, where they came come from. Right. You're kind of in the same position as where you were before, sure. thinking the Earth is round, but still not having answers, except for, I have a theory here, or I believe a scientist You got to where we are. Yeah, right? yeah, you know. Yeah, you got to where so, we are. So my, my curious is, why aren't there more people like, who are atheists, but are willing to adopt this idea, but there are people who are Christian who are so easy to jump over? Why, uh, why, leap, is it, leap, why doesn't that leap occur faith. across the board? Sit, plain, plain and simple. Uh, Christians love, religion as a whole, make, I mean, that's a whole, I think, leap of faith. That's where the concept came from, which is you, you, you were willing to make, the, what is that, God, it was an Einstein quote. He said that um, one of the reasons why science and religion have a really, really tough time merging is because that science is stagnant and religion is blind, meaning science will not make the leap of faith and religion seems to make blind leaps of faith. And that's what, in this case, it's not even that blind. It's like, look, we're giving you kind of a blueprint, more or less. Make it. And then once they do, they realize, like, yeah, this is way easier to deal with for Christians. Way easier. Again, I, and I, I don't know if I remember saying this the other day with you, but think of it this way. Because of social media, because, you know, a new breed of scientists type people, we have now created a way of explaining a, soul, a, a cosmic model, if you want to call it a cosmic word, that is now easier than this. And easier to who? Easier to the average person. Easier to her. Easier to, to him. Easier to a lot of people. Because Re regardless of religious. Yeah, rega regardless because it involves almost very little math. 
I mean, uh, yes, you do some hypotheticals, like what engineering technology you use for that and that and, you know, what's underneath it and, and all that other stuff. But the globe model, the, what I try to tell people, and I'm not being mean when I say this, is like, look, if you're a big scientist guy, you're not going to save save your arguments with math, mostly because the eight inches per mile squared. I don't know if I remember telling you this, which is, okay, so... The radius. The, the, the radius, measurable. so eight inches per mile squared, it, mainstream science says the curvature of the Earth is eight inches per mile per mile. Well, I have run, and I ran into this in month one, which was, I, I realized that the average person on the street not only knew nothing about physics, they've forgotten pretty much all math. And by that, I mean, we're talking a really simple, I say this now because you know it, Algebra equation, which is the curvature of the Earth is eight inches per mile. That one, per mile, per mile, right? You ask them, they, you seriously, you can go to anybody and say, okay, what the curvature there? If I told you that's eight inches per mile, they're totally with you. You're like, yep, I'm there, right? Everybody from a plumber to a fry cook to whatever, I'm totally with you. And then you say squared, and they just glaze over. It's like everything they ever forgot about um, high school algebra is, is coming back to haunt them. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> that means is if they don't know that. Every time somebody tries to argue and create the globe with geometry and trig and calculus and quantum mechanics, you might as well be just feeding them a loud amplified version of a modem handshake. They don't hear it. You might as well be saying Latin because the math, there's the, the math will not even begin to sink in. And so all of a sudden, remember, the path of least resistance, which is people always take the easiest path, art of war, Clemson, which is they now, it's like, if this is easier, to, even even if you say, well, it's not a complete model and there's missing pieces here, it's like, yeah, but it's a lot more complete now than this is. Not necessarily more complete. You're saying um, it's more digestible. There you go. Which Great. Is, which I is may fine. Yeah, he's but, he's but, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy right that. <laughs> and the, subsidiary right. The, the most digestible explanation doesn't mean it's right. No, it doesn't. But does that matter? Well, to me, it matters what's right. Well, sure, sure. So you're saying... More people can believe an idea if it's simple enough to understand without knowing any math or, say, history or anything, right? It's not yeah, a belief I, system, though. It's not, a, this well, is I, a, the, it, it is a belief system, whether, no. whether or not it's true. It's okay. It's okay. I, I get what you're saying there, and you're saying, well, just because it's simple doesn't mean you should be pushing it, because if it's simple and you're convincing people, is that fraudulent? I'm going, no, 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 no. I'm not saying it's fraudulent. No, I'm no, just it's okay. It doesn't carry any weight. It does to them. Well, it's saying... A, be a belief can be widely held if right. it's simple, but a more complicated one isn't going to be... It's Yeah, sorry, I'm, I lost my train. No, 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 that's all right. To me, I don't see the power in your statement that, hey, people are have an easier time understanding flat earth because you don't have to know math. Right. Yeah, people don't... People will believe a lot of things that are easy yes easier to understand yes but it doesn't mean they're true but we no can no it doesn't but but in in doing that they will explore this option remember these we're not talking about a lot of dummies here i mean these people look everybody starts in the hole everybody hates flat earth to start everybody looks at this and say and you know i say flat earth right and they go yeah i'm not buying it and then they and i go okay it's this 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 a through z and take a look and then they start chewing on it they start chewing on it and they realize there's more loose ends here than there is well, here. Not loose ends. What you're saying well, is... Oh, no, I am seeing Okay, well, maybe, maybe... First, we have to teach them what they believe. Then we have to show them the flaws in what they believe. And but, but we first have to really go over what they were taught because it wasn't something they looked into. It's something they were literally... Assumed. Yeah. Assumed. Yeah. Assumed. Yeah. They, everybody, the white the like lab coats, just because he's wearing this doesn't mean he's got a master's. And yet... It, we see that time made a clue on it, which was look, a person walks around. We, we believe the uniform that is presented to us, and we believe science that is presented to us, which is why science went at some point in their history, and it didn't take long. They went from science to scientism, which is they took a, they took leaps of faith, and then they put their stamp on it, and they said, again, not not maybe collectively, they kind of thought this. It wasn't like they sat around and you know wrung their hands, came up with this idea, which was no matter what we put our stamp on people out there seem to buy it so let's just keep running with it and we'll just keep building on our own theories and and just start making up stuff i don't know the dark matter dark energy <coughs> NASA. the nasa oh gravity uh the core of the earth which i love so much you know the core of the earth it's like not only tell us what the core of the earth looks like they tell us what jupiter and saturn and neptune things that they don't even claim to have landed on 
they, they came to, to say the core of the Earth. Uh, you know, the, the core of that particular body. The weight of a neutron star. The weight of a neutron star. Oh, oh, many, but, you know. <laughs> it, sorry. Could, could that possibly just be answered by math? That oh, is, oh by there math you go only, again. Is, only math. Yeah, yeah, math. But math that's like, like the layperson doesn't understand. Eight and a half miles squared. But, math, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's it, answer. There's, there's that, clearly math that's that we only don't math. understand. That no, maybe but there's only math here. Questions. When we go to look at the real Earth, which this man has done with me, yeah, this these this curvature and this the motions don't appear. That's that's what one of the again it's one of the most compelling things. We and I didn't even put it in the clues, which was all of a sudden people started literally for whatever reason to start running to the coastline with cameras and just started cranking up the zoom on their camera and saying, "Look, I can see this. Look, I can see this." And all conditions, all countries. Uh, all you know, types of light and weather and, and whatever distances and atmospheric conditions. And everyone kept coming back to the same thing. It's like, no, there's absolutely no curve. They couldn't find that equation. That was, if mainstream says 80 inches per mile squared, you and you and all the other people go to the beach and they can't find it, how many times does that have to happen before all of a sudden there's this consensus? And again, it just starts moving forward and propels itself. Mm -hmm. And that's where everyone is now. I mean, it is the, it is the most single... I shouldn't say easy, easily provable argument, but it's the easiest accessible to everybody because there's a body of water everywhere. Yeah. Lakes and frozen lakes, that's even better. Frozen lakes are fantastic. Wish we'd do more of those. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I rambled. No, no, that was good. If you can't find curvature, this is impossible. If, if water doesn't curve, this is completely impossible. Yeah, that makes sense. If, if the Earth is covered in 71% water, and water always is flat and level, 71% of the these guys, these guys were at the Salton Sea with me when National Geographic did their segment. They just just came after us. You know, they had a debunking squad that they hired from down here, and, and they tried to shoot this footage. And they were so frustrated by the, you know the stuff that they were showing. I mean, the test was absolutely horrible. That Wait, just, which test? Oh, they were looking across the Salton Sea, uh, you know, nine, ten miles, and they were you know they waited till midday, and the, the atmospheric lensing. And refraction was off the freaking hook, and we couldn't even see mountains in the distance after a while. Uh, and National Geographic edited it to where they even killed the balloon thing. The balloon thing was the best, which was they were supposed to shoot balloons on the other side of the lake, 10 miles away. Nine, nine and a half? Nine, six. Nine, 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 nine. So balloons on the other side. The thing was, they forgot because they're rookies, and you never ever do it live on television first. You know, you, you always do a dry run, and that was they realize that when you send an object 10, 10 miles off into the distance and everything kind of looks the same, you have nowhere idea to look, right? So how are you going to find balloons on the other side of the curvature if you don't know where to look, if you have no landmarkers? We were the ones that showed it to them because we had our cameras looking at the freaking balloons. We, could, we were the spotters. And we were saying, look, there's your balloons right there. And they said, no, no, you can't see them. They're on the other side of the curve. It's like, no, they're there. We're, yeah. They're right there, and we were absolutely right. And Still beach to beach. Beach Still to beach. The, too. Yeah. the balloons weren't even launched in the air. You shouldn't have been able to see the balloons until they were 34 feet up in the air. And, and that's that, the point of the whole experiment. And we found them when they were still on the ground. And that footage frustrated them so much, they cut out the entire yeah. balloon <laughs> section of their segment on the national feed. Yeah, they didn't even They, they killed it. I mean, they literally, I mean, that took a lot of time. That took hours and a lot of manpower. And they came, we didn't have to do anything. It was all their team. I was up at four in the morning. I helped. I, yeah. I was. At and the we team uploaded all the footage. Experiment. So what and we're saying is documented well. If yeah. you look up salt and sea experiments, you'll you'll see the actual footage that they removed. And they went to their backup plan, which was yeah. send a raft out halfway, about four and a half miles, this little, little inflatable raft, and then hold up a, a, a sign with stri uh, stripes on it. And then, and during the segment, they didn't even say one how far it was away or what exactly they should see. It's like, oh, yep, there's stripes disappearing. Good night, everybody. And I was like, why are you talking about? You can see the whole boat and the shoreline behind, and the other another four miles beyond it. That was, you know, they they dodged it as as much as they could. It was some of the worst editing I've ever seen. And ever. you could still see the stripes. Yeah, like, and you could like, still see oh, the stripes. Look, you could see the red stripe and the white stripe are gone. And you look at the video, and you can clearly see the red and the white stripes. So yeah. she's just blatantly lying. Yeah. And she's like, what could cause that? And the little guy from IAG is like, only the curvature of the Earth. Yeah. But again, it's <laughs> National Geographic. I mean, they are the poster child for science, even more than Discovery, even more than other things. I mean, National Geographic had the exclusive shots for the Apollo missions all through those years. So they hate us. They, and, but at the same time, the reason why they even contacted us was because of the U.W. survey. That really bothered them. 
So what you said up there is like a third of 18 to 24 year olds. Third of the 18 to 20 year olds don't believe in the globe anymore. In the entire country? country? And yeah, the United States. And that freaked them out because one, it was a British survey. Two, it was uh, you know, a scientific research. It wasn't us, it was them. It was their side of the field. And they, were, they decided, hey, let's call up some Americans, see how bad this really is. And most of them fit in 2%, 3%, 5%, which is still a lot. You remember every percentage point in the United States overall is 3.3 million which is a lot of people, right? But when they got to the 1824s, it was 34%. And, I mean, that's way, you know, any variances. I mean, that's way out there. And that bugged that. I mean, there was a lot of scientific journals that were so bothered by it that they were writing pieces saying, well, obviously, the study was wrong. You know, you're, they're calling up their own people saying, you're doing it wrong. It's like, what are you talking about? It's the same study we always do with anything else we do. No, no, you're not asking the right questions. But National Geographic saw this, and they freaked out. They, they called me when I was up in um, uh, Toronto at a film festival, and they said, uh, they said, look, we want to do this because we're really concerned that this might be turning. And they were, and they were true to their word. When you had left, they had sat me down for about 30 minutes. They used 30 seconds of that. And that 30 minutes where there was just us talking, they were asking me questions I've never heard before in my life. Like what? Uh, what happens when Flat Earth gets beyond your control? Uh, what happens to medicine? What happens to technology? What happens to civilization as we know it? What happens if you guys usher? I wasn't exaggerating. What happens if you start usher, you usher in the new dark ages? I'm going really. Wow, that seems a bit out there. But and I, you know, I played it politically correct and said, well, obviously, you know, I want to lead by example. But we haven't done anything. We've never blown up a post office or burned <laughs> down. We've burned down a library or any of that stuff. Or even gone in the streets uh, with any with any form of protest. Why well, is we're lobbying? Is Tori? Cor is she can't be leaving? No, She's no, no. Like, Tori's on the ground taking footage. Is that van driving over him? Close enough. Oh yeah, that was funny. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so he's making so a maker. message, Corey. So this is what we would do. If we but, we lay, lay in front of okay. but, but, the vehicles. Yeah. But Nat Geo was really concerned. It wasn't just the on-air talent. It was the producer behind me. I, he, she, he was feeding her the questions, and I could hear it in his voice. He was very concerned, mostly because science wasn't putting up an organized defense, mostly out of arrogance. Anything, you know, their science is like they'll go away. They'll go away. They'll go away. It's like, dude, every year, everything just gets weirder. Because eventually, again, critical mass, you know, all it has to do is hit some sort of mainstream. Once you get people, the average person, talking about it, you're in trouble. And then, yeah, I mean, I do agree in some sense that science will have to be backpedaling, if, if that's the case. I don't necessarily wish them any harm, but come on, they've been, they've been running ripshod for five centuries. We're in the dark ages right now. That's what people don't understand. It's like things are actually terrible right now, and they could be a million times better. Mm. And if we were in charge, we would make sure that things were worse. Kids, and what children, and free energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how about I mean? How about how about how about science science decisions? I'll, I'll, let me let me do this. Science decisions not being made for money, and by that I mean, and I know. Look, we all there's lies in you know business and politics and entertainment and sports, but there's also lies in science. Science is you know they consider themselves above reproach, and yet uh, they will take the money as much as anybody else. And you say, well, when? Well, when they cut corners, how about to bring any product to market? Uh, and by that, I mean, oh no, just rattle off a few lead paint, lead gasoline, DDT, and all the variants of DDT, asbestos, which we're still doing class action suits for. Uh, oh, I know, how about all those fun guys that wore the lab coats that took all the money to sell the cigarettes were fine, and so on and so on. Um, so then, essentially, what you're saying is that people who do science don't always have pure values. Scientists need Porsches too. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but so if flat earthers ran the country, they would be tempted by payoffs and greed, just like anyone else. Not as not, not as much as you might think. Why it's not? it's weird because once you get into the, if you become seriously, once you become flat flat earth, you become a lot more open minded. And I, I'm okay. Well, you're, you're in let, this, let me side note that the, there's a, obviously a huge portion of. Christians that are flat earthers, yes. a huge portion. Yes. Are they all what you consider open-minded? A lot more, <laughs> a lot more than you might think. Here, here's why. I, I personally don't want devout Christians running the country as the government. I don't think anybody does. Okay. Yeah. So, no, I got you. I got you. Well, let me let me do an objective objectives because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quote chapter and verse. But if this place was created, now I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. When I figured out 
that this place was absolutely built and that somebody, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, you've got an overlord that's watching us, you know, maybe just like a parent sitting on the couch, you know, pulling down the newspaper every once in a while, making sure you're not burning things down. But once I realized that something, someone may be looking over us, I couldn't do a malicious thing to anyone else if I know I wanted to. Couldn't take the risk. Well, that's you personally, but I know a lot of people who I think really believe in a higher power that there's a creator watching over, right. and they do a lot of terrible things. I agree. I agree. So but the flat, as it, the flat Earth community, um, when when you become a flat earther, it changes your view on the outside world as far as everybody else too. Because yeah. we are we're all here, and none of the names on this map mean anything. As far as like different countries, as far yeah, as, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, you're all you know, you're all part of the same boat, yeah. the same family. And so we know that we're here together, and we have to take care of each other. That's like everybody here, like the fighters here, we're a very tight community, and we yeah. we welcome everybody, and we try and take care of our own. Dan, like we've built really strong relationships oh, yeah. with everybody around here, and if we were in charge, we would want to make sure that everybody was taken care of because we know that this earth is actually designed to be able to sustain everybody that's here. I mean, um, <clears throat> overpopulation is, is another myth just like the globe. Mm -hmm. You could fit the whole entire population of the world into Texas, and everybody could have a thousand square feet to themselves. Like, that's how much room is here. Yeah. And then they make us think that, you know, we're all struggling and everything's scarce. And, yeah. You know. Simulated scarcity, yeah. putting the pressure on, <laughs> keeping people busy. But again, we can all, like I try to tell, I can only speak for myself, but all I can do is lead by example and, and give my best example out there, my best foot forward, and I'm hoping that more people understand what I said at the end of the speech, what I feel. Uh, and again, if you feel, if you, once you realize you're a part of this, again, the bo yes, the borders are gone. In fact, this map is fun because there are no, you don't see any countries. And well, there's, there's borders there just as much as there's borders on the globe wherever sure, it is. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, you can, I feel the same way that like we should be moving towards a society where we don't care if somebody's on one side of the border or the other. It should be about do we have shared values and can we all come together and right. support and love each other. But I think that thinking the earth is round and I don't know that me switching over to a flat earth model is going to change that belief positive or negative well again you're not there yet but that's fine and that and that is if again once you can wrap your head around this you realize again, it's, it's one of the default states and that is if this was built then it was built by somebody if it was built by somebody somebody bigger than you out there I mean, it's the same argument for round earth that's yeah, a, that's a yes Christian yes but this is but this is even, but, but but round earth has more of an organic -y, well what they've been pushing at is for a long time which is if you're in a round earth then you're just this little rock that's flying through space and gets snuffed out at all times. And again, there's no, that's where science can latch on because then they can go out and say, well, there is no God. And go all the way back to the Big Bang, again, dark matter, dark energy. But, you, but you, you still face the same argument whenever you talk to someone who believes in God but, is, well, how could this earth, it's so perfect and it's the same life. And but this is why, so, so like, the, but with the flat earth, like when your mindset with the globe, like yeah. you, you, you're in a mindset where it's hard for you to think of something other than the way that things are like right now. And understanding the flat earth is also understanding that everything that's going on right now is completely uh, not what it should be. So like you think, oh, there's no way we could ever do that. We can never all come together. But there is a way. You just haven't stepped outside of the box well, I to guess think it, about uh, how that could possibly happen. I think if, we could. If there's free energy everywhere and free, or not free, but unlimited resources. Oh, I'm tempted. There's no reason why we shouldn't all be able to, to come uh, together. They me a I mean, you think we're on the globe, but Put all in. they talk about is going to Mars oh, and okay. starting colonies on Mars. Like the best thing in the world would be to get off of this world and go somewhere else. <laughs> no plan works there. But <laughs> well, I don't, we don't I, need I, to I, go anywhere. We have to. We have to understand where we're at and understand that there's, that there's a better way to do things. And Understanding that the Earth is flat is like a foundational thing to completely wiping oh, 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 that whole slate clean and, then, um, and having an open mind to, to hear new ideas about how we could have extra globes. I, I agree that oh, how big. the world is not I can't take nearly it where it should be. Oh, I mean, There's a lot of changes we should make. The first one being, uh, I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. energy being free mm -hmm. and it being okay. generated in a totally different I'd have way to that doesn't oh, I could give one destroy the planet. Right. And I think you and I could I don't know agree if on else probably local, I'd want to, uh, a thousand other things and, and form a group that really set out to change those problems. Right. 
but I see the earth being flat or round. Right, it's like, it you like chocolate and I like vanilla. Mm -hmm. It's like two ways of looking at the situation, but we can both agree that things are fucked up and being run by the wrong people. Mm -hmm. But I don't see that that dovetails so perfectly into flat earth. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people I'll can agree on that stuff yeah. without sure. even talking I mean, I about guess, the shape. I guess un like yeah. having the foundational similarity, like have, being on the same foundation is like the start of no being able to Love move in that direction. And being disconnected, uh, <laughs> being disconnected from We're that, playing the foundational truth of like where we are is <laughs> awesome. a very strong barrier. <laughs> Misunderstanding. Uh, love, well, I, I see this thing happen where uh, people who are religious sometimes have a belief that there's somebody love looking love out for us. Mark might get sick on wrong. that very Even if you're talking, you Mark's not going up there. I'm on. Hey, uh, I told him, I go, if I have to take Graham with me and I'm a zombie, it's your fault. And I will start throwing people over. To me, I see that. I don't know, but Kenny Black is over there. I'm still talking to him. And I think that All right. When I was trying to usher you, it wasn't here. Oh, oh. Well, he, he can follow me over. God made the butter. And that he has a plan for it. He's the guy that follows us to Vaughn Studios. He's looking, like Mark just said, oh. kind of as a parent looking over. Right. What's this for? Do I get a globe? Okay, What's this for? Not just a globe. I don't know whoever has it, but I, not I, just a globe, an autograph. Wait, wait, that's not a real shirt. I got a shirt. Oh, I'm taking this to be signed by everybody. All right. Because, you know, yeah. I'm driving, so I carry all kinds of stuff. This way, and to the left. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Mark, this I, isn't I, a great I, one, but if you want to take it for somebody, you can. Um, can you put two, maybe? <laughs> two, maybe? I'm navy. Oh, I thought it was maybe. He's navy. Thank you. All right. Everywhere. All right. So you want me to go over there? I'm just What? Well, no, I have to. Well, there's another. Thing that more. Okay, what do you want me to do? Because do what I want you to do. What do you want me to do? Nothing. Okay. So just say no. Just say something so Joe can get a sound bite from you. Right now? Yeah. On this? Yeah. Uh, this is Mark Sargent at the QE 2019 conference. It was I mean, I wonderful. It was great to see everybody, and I'm flying back home tomorrow. And it was by far the coldest California temperature I've ever been in, which is weird. Normally, I'm really uncomfortable. This feels so much like the North Can I borrow West. Borrow the sharpie to have other people sign it. I was, I was very comfortable. And so, yeah, thanks to Joe and everybody that did the conference, and I'm, I'm glad that um, everything. Yep, yeah, everything's, every, everyone's back on track. And uh, I think the speech I did went well. Hopefully, I'll, everyone will get a chance to listen to it. And what else? That's it. Just so happy to see you. Yeah. No, I'm glad, glad to be here. And sorry for anyone that uh, went to Denver and didn't get a chance to see me speak. No, I still, I still hate him. I still hate that kid. If you, seriously, I say, if it was my kid, I would have smothered him with a pillowcase. <laughs> and his brother. I wonder what he's going to do. Oh, he'll release it, and it'll get a lot of 